with G7 going on right now and this push for everyone, and not even just a push, but like an insistence for everyone to support Ukraine, I really, God put it in my heart this morning to want to understand this. Like, what is it that he's doing? And so I prayed and I asked him. And I started to research kind of the history between Ukraine and the United States, Ukraine and Rome, Ukraine and Russia. And he told me that I was asking the wrong question. And I've kind of known this for a while, and I've talked about it on the channel, the history between communism and Rome. And that when Napoleon took down Rome, communism is the kingdom that was established. So I've known that that's a threat. And of course, this has been the narrative for most of, well, all of my life and much of my parents' lives, that communism was the enemy. But he was raising something up in my heart today for me to understand more deeply. And I'm not sure if this will be news to you, but it was news to me that Moscow actually was referred to, has been referred to as the Third Rome. So Napoleon set up atheistic communism. Napoleon considered Russia a natural ally. Ideologically, they were similar. There were no territorial conflicts between Russia and France. And of course, we know that this kingdom of communism flourished up until the point where Pope John Paul II and Ronald Reagan came together and took down that wall. Now, as I was studying this, I noticed that even though the Roman Catholic Church has not come up and said, or Rome in general has not come up and said anything about this historical conflict, anything about insecurity or threat, but there's some pretty bad blood in the commentaries that I came across. So people are upset that Moscow would dare to call themselves the third Rome. And I've noticed this pattern with the Roman Catholic Church that they don't really raise any kind of, they don't ruffle any feathers. They let their members do it. They let other people do their dirty work and then they hide behind that. They commission other theologians to put out false doctrines, for example, like when Protestants were pointing the finger at Rome or the Roman Catholic Church and saying that's the Antichrist. They commissioned a Catholic theologian named Rivera to put out a doctrine that the Antichrist is actually a man. And so that's where we get that doctrine today. And consistently, they don't take a stand on anything. I mean, even Francis will say, like, this is the way things are. This is what, you know, God wants. But each parish can decide, right? Like, you can bless same-sex marriage, but each parish can decide what they want to do. How How is that? So... Basically, God just gives suggestions, not commands. It's like this way of being a wishy-washy waffler who doesn't take a stand, is above doing their own defense or their, their own dirty work. They just get other people to do it. So I've seen that consistently with them, and it feels very familiar as I'm reading these commentaries and seeing what people have to say. I can see that they're upset. I can see that they take offense to the fact that Moscow would even claim that they are the third Rome. So let's take a look at the history and why it is that the United States might be compelled not necessarily to support Ukraine. Listen, there might be other things that are going on behind the scenes, but the only thing that really matters is how is God conforming this for his purpose and what's going on in the end times. So there might be something behind the scenes, I don't know. Biden patting his pockets, so that wouldn't be, right? That could never be. But if we're focusing on the minutia of what one man is doing, we're not going to see the larger picture of what's, what God is revealing and fulfilling in these kingdoms. So what is the motivation? Why is it that the United States is compelled to assist Ukraine? Does it have something to do with the United States, with the relationship between the United States and Ukraine? Because I never heard anything about Ukraine all my life. There was no narrative about Ukraine, but I will tell you, there's always been a narrative about communism. There's always been a narrative about, a narrative about Russia. And that narrative has always included that Russia is a big threat, that communism is a big threat. And even some counterfeit Christian narratives about communism being somehow involved in the end times to establish new world order. I don't see that in the Bible, by the way, guys. But someone put it out. Someone put that out. So consistently, as I look back into what I've been exposed to in my lifetime, that's been a threat. So the support of Ukraine, I, I, I have a very hard time 
believing that this is about really supporting Ukraine or supporting something that they believe to be immoral. This is about preventing Russia, communism, from rising again, from coveting that title of Rome. It's about that. So let's first define what, are, what is being proposed as Rome 1, 2, and 3. Rome 1 is pagan Rome. Rome 2 is papal Rome, Constantinople. And Rome 3 is Moscow. I'm not going to get into like a political argument about that or an opinion argument. These, this is what's being presented. So here's, here's the thing, I, the reason I'm saying that. And is because as I was looking at people's commentaries, I saw that people got very upset. And the only reason you're going to get upset about that is if you have some investment in what Rome means. I have no investment in what Rome means because Rome is of this world. Rome was, now is not, but will rise again to go to its destruction. What investment do I have in this? The only people who have an investment in it are Catholics. They're the ones getting upset about it. And the reason they're getting upset about it, by the way, is because they're being told to get upset about it. Because Catholics don't do anything based on their own ideas or their own study. They, they, all of their opinions come from what somebody else told them to think and feel. Think about that for a minute. Why would you be upset that someone is claiming to be the third Rome? Because you have an investment in Rome. And who told you to get upset about that? Because I've never met a Catholic who actually reads the Bible, who actually does their own research. I've only met Catholics who listen to priests tell them what to think and feel. So this is trickling down within the Catholic Church. They're just not taking a firm stand on what they think and feel. They have other people doing their dirty work. If you think about what Rome represented, it was the symbol of civilization, imperial success, and other nations have always wanted to be comparable to this great Rome. That's what the world does, doesn't it? They want to associate themselves with Roman greatness and power and pomp. And so that has been a sort of standard that people have com or nations have compared themselves to. Even in the word, it talks about it being great. It talks about it having the strength of iron. The second Rome is Constantinople. Constantinople is a capital of the Eastern Roman Empire. And Constantinople became the center of religion after the decline of the Western Empire. But in 1054, Catholicism and Orthodoxy split. And the patriarch of Constantinople has become the leader of the Orthodox Church. Meanwhile, in 988, a Russian prince named Vladimir converts to Christianity and Russia becomes Orthodox. But there are also rumors that, and, and I think that we can safely assume that this is probably true because this has always happened within politics and so-called religion, as did with Constantine, that Vladimir was essentially selecting from Islam, Judaism, Catholicism, Orthodoxy, but that he was most likely choosing his allies. So as with Constantine, this is a political decision. This is not a religious decision. So the allies at that time would have been Greek Constantinople, Western Rome, Arab Caliphate, or Khazar Khaganate. So Vladimir chose the Greeks, and this subsequently had an impact on Russian history. Vladimir also married the sister of the Byzantine Empire. And so naturally, this is bolstering his political influence and political connections. During this time, the Byzantine Empire has continued to lose strength as it's in wars with Arabs, Mongols, and Turks. And then in 1453, Constantinople is taken by the Turks and it becomes Istanbul. So while Byzantine is weakening, Moscow is strengthening. And now Moscow has a new ruler, Ivan III, also referred to as Ivan the Great. There are two Ivans, one's the Great, one's the Terrible, two different guys. Ivan III is the Great, the fourth is the Terrible. Ivan does similarly to Vladimir by marrying the niece of the last Byzantine emperor. Her name was Sophia Palielog. And this is all 
part of his effort to establish Russia as a successor to the Byzantine Empire. He sees that they're losing strength. Why not? Why not them? Why not Ma Moscow? And so Ivan the Third, Ivan the Great, is the one who starts referring to Moscow as being the Third Rome. And even this word czar is borrowed from the Latin word Caesar. And of course, as with Constantine, this was a political endeavor. It was not a religious endeavor, but certainly what was used as part of that political endeavor was to establish Moscow as the center of Orthodox, quote unquote, Christianity and the rightful heir to the legacy of Rome and Byzantium. So do you think Rome is thrilled about this? Do you think that they're thrilled about their legacy being coveted by <laughs> Moscow? Do you think that the Roman Catholic Church is thrilled about this split between Roman Catholicism and Orthodoxy and that they selected Orthodoxy? I mean, are you guys seeing kind of a picture of why they might be upset? They're coveting their power and really it's not even their power because they fell. God took it away. They don't have the sense to understand that God is the one who did that and that God is the one who's going to give them power again so that they will go to perdition. But as far as what they see is that Moscow is coveting their role. So they're not happy about this succession and they want their power back. Why would they allow Russia to continue to increase their power? Why would they support that? They're going to block it. And the false prophet of the United States is going to assist them. They're going to do their dirty work because the Roman Catholic Church does not do their dirty work. They outsource their responsibilities. I think it's pretty interesting that the G7 going on in Italy right now began with the Pope setting the stage for the focus of this summit. Who do you think is behind this? Just because Rome is not an actual member of the United Nations. I can't remember what it's called, but they have essentially a seat on the United Nations, but they're not an actual member. Guys, you can have more power and influence not being a part of this block than if you were a part of it. What's going on with Israel? They're not a part of any of this. They have literally no legal rights to anything that's being provided to them. And yet so much is being provided to them and they're dictating leg legislation in the United States. I mean, for what reason? So don't be deluded just because they're not a member of the United Nations that they don't have power because they most certainly do. And they have more power than any of its members. What does the United Nations have to do with Israel? And would Israel be doing the same for us? I don't think so, guys. This support of the United States to Ukraine really doesn't have to do with the United States supporting Ukraine. It has everything to do with blocking what has already claimed to be the third Rome, the successor, the beholder of the greatness that was Rome, and even choosing the religion that split from the Roman Catholic Church. All of these things are provocative, aren't they? And this little antichrist is not happy about it. And the false prophet who does her bidding is going to try to make mama happy. I hope this helps to put some historical context in place so that you can understand what we're seeing right now and why there is this compulsion to keep Russia from gaining power. It's not about support to Ukraine. It is about keeping Russia from gaining power. Please discern this message with God.